Today, I have a complete surprise. It is going to be the most exciting thing, so stay tuned to find, yeah, it's just more power adapters. Amazon Basics' complete range of power adapter products is going to get tested and reviewed. I have from the 5 watt level all the way up to the new 100 watt Amazon Basics power adapters. The 5 and 9 watt are technically Amazon brand, but whatever, they're in the group. They manage to share similar packaging, but the size gets larger as the watts go up. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons who helped decide on this video. I'm going to be following this 100 watt adapter through the opening and testing process. The package is open and very easy and mostly just paper which is nice. They do have a protective bag around the adapter but I already removed that here. The adapter doesn't look too bad though. I did notice that it is available in both black and white finishes. It is heavy and it's larger than some of the other 100 watt adapters. Let's take a quick look at each adapter. The 5 watt and 9 watt adapters are very similar. The size gets a little bigger on the 9 watt. They both have USB A ports only. The 30 watt steps up to a modern times with a USB C port and so does the 65 watt adapter. The 68 watt adapter adds an extra port and does some power sharing which makes it different. More on that later. The 100 watt is the big one though. Lots of ports and lots of power. From the 30 watt and up. These adapters do have blue LED lights. They are dim and bright lighting, but at night you will notice them. A common theme with all these adapters is they have safety listings, which I do like to see. It looks like UL for Amazon Basics devices. The 100 watt adapter has three different marks for US, Canada, Mexico, and Japan. The specifications are shown, but they are a bit confusing. I don't really see where the power sharing is talked about and how it is distributed between the various ports. I finally went ahead and picked up a new power supply. This supply lets me type in typical voltage and frequency levels for AC main supplies up to about 500 volt amps. Not bad. The fan stays off for the most part under light loads, so that is another reason why this isn't bad for video work. I can finally start looking at some 50 hertz data too. During the testing, these adapters all had reasonable idle power consumption. The smaller adapters for their extra size did not bother with any significant AC line filtering though so the noise on the idle is higher. The 65 watt is still the leader of the 65 watt adapters. The 5 and 9 watt power adapters are 5 volt only devices. The 30, 68 and 100 watt devices add USB power delivery modes. I found that they supply 5, 9, 15 and 20 volt fixed voltages and the 65 watt device is the only one that does the 12 volt mode. These power adapters all lack a programmable power supply or PPS mode to adjust the output voltage. So these will not provide the fastest possible charge to some devices like Samsung phones. iPhones use the normal PD modes. Once we take this up to the full power operating mode, it seems fairly standard. The DC voltage is stable and they delivered the claimed rated power no problem. What happens when I overload each of these devices? Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. The trip points are available online if you want to look them up. The link will be down in the description. But here is where the 100 watt adapter tripped on overload. It looks like 120 watts and it safely recovered. Power factor correction is not present on any of these adapters except the 100 watt one. The 100 watt adapter chooses to turn this on only in the 20 volt mode. On the lower wattage it isn't expected so these as expected have rather large peaking graphs. Not following the sinusoidal shape of the yellow line which is the ideal shape for all the lines. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as a efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The 100 watt adapter is absolutely pathetic when compared with itself with the PFC enabled at the same wattage, but it does lose some real power efficiency. At this level, after losses in the wires that supply the power, this is effectively a wash. At the higher power levels, thankfully, it is on. When switching over to the 230 volt power, we can see that the power factor correction does make a difference in the graph, but the power factor correction isn't as effective as it is on 120 volts. This shows the compromise of multi-voltage power supply convenience. Almost all of these adapters met the claimed Department of Energy 6 efficiency level and idle power level for the respective tiers. The 5 watt did not meet the active efficiency requirement, which often 5 watt adapters don't meet. Things start to change when I do something I haven't done before. Switch over to 230 volts and 50 hertz. Right away, I see issues with the EU 20191782 on the Amazon 100 watt adapter. With the larger size of these adapters relative 
relative to their power levels, the surfaces stay within a reasonable temperature during operation. Less than 60 degrees C is considered normal. The output voltages from these power adapters were within the USB specifications and stayed strong during all tests. When it says 20 volts, you get 20 volts. The 5 watt power adapter packaging weighs 17 grams and the power adapter weighs 35 grams. The 9 watt packaging weighs 18 grams and the power adapter weighs 47 grams. The 30 watt power adapter packaging weighs 28 grams and the power adapter weighs 58 grams. The 65 watt adapter weighs 95 grams. The 68 watt packaging weighs 32 grams while the power adapter weighs 151 grams. And finally, the 100 watt power adapter packaging is 47 grams and the power adapter weighs 260 grams. These are all fairly average sized adapters so I didn't bring anything to compare to specifically. The packaging is mostly paper and very lightweight. The 100 watt adapter is on the larger and heavier side. While most of these power adapters have one port, the larger ones have more than one port. The power sharing is unique with these devices. Instead of renegotiating the power delivery on plug or unplug of a port, it renegotiates only when power is delivered. So when I turn on the demand for a few watts on the second port, now the first port voltage resets. But I can plug and unplug all I want and the renegotiation doesn't happen until the power is used. I noticed the overload condition changes with more things plugged in, so you can't pull more than 65 watts out of the top port as soon as you have something else plugged in. I guess this makes sense though given the wattage numbers on the other ports. This one has one high power port and three low power ports. The power sharing information is vague and obviously is going to vary a lot, but I really don't recommend this adapter for low wattage charging anyway. Way. I am consolidating the data section a little since there are so many power adapters to look at. The lower wattage power adapters are not the most interesting here, and in general the numbers look worse on smaller adapters. This is the 9 watt data. The 30 watt adapter is actually not bad, but remember, no PPS. It is stepping things into a reasonable direction, but it does have high idle noise. The overall power quality score might not be bad here. I've already taken a look at the 65 watt adapter, but here's a quick recap of its data. This is still the best performing 65 watt adapter. The 68 watt adapter doesn't trail too far behind though, but note the output power on each port is limited. Oddly labeled two different ways, I guess the 50 when you have the USB-A port in use and 60 when not. Very unusual way to include the label. And finally, the 100 watt power adapter has the best specifications as expected, but it is a tale of two adapters. The data is great at idle and on the high end, but when it's not so great is in the middle power range, which is most likely where you're gonna spend most of the time with this power adapter. As mentioned, this adapter only turns on power factor correction in the 20 volt mode. You can waste a port and plug in a 20 volt decoy to force this mode, but it consumes about an extra watt to enable the PFC circuit on this device. But this is where it gets interesting. Let's take a look at this device performance when I change it over to 230 volts 50 hertz input power. It does a lot worse. The power factor circuit struggles to turn on and so does not do as good of a job on the higher voltage and also the idle power consumption is also higher. The net result is a 13 point lower PQS. When comparing each adapter to its category leader, the 65 watt is the leader. Actually, the 30 watt is too. Where did that come from? The 100 watt and the 68 watt are average though. On the idle graph, these adapters are okay. The 100 watt doesn't do bad. And the smaller adapters sip tiny amounts of power, which is a nice plus. On the average power consumption graph, these are taking reasonable spots sometimes and then taking some pretty low spots other times. The 100 watt suffers from the high on point of the PFC and the 65 watt still shines as the category winner. Okay, so the Amazon Basics power adapters do have one thing in common, the price point. They are all very reasonably priced for what you get. They have a very different power sharing behavior than many other power adapters. The 100 watt is very similar, really the same quality wise as the Anker 100 watt 736, but at a lower price point. I'm not sure who is actually making these, but being in line with the competition is important and they are doing that. For the 30 watt and the 65 watt, they are the best ones tied for the best spot, but they don't have the PFC I'd like to see. No one booted the Bassius 100 watt adapter out yet. The PQS for that adapter does drop though to 150 when it's on the 230 volt and 50 hertz, by the way. I could go through and redo all the adapters on 230 volts now. No. 
no, not going to happen. New stuff only. If any of these look like they are what you need, there are affiliate links down in the description. Okay, time to apply some stickers. These are tested and on the database, so you can take a look at how they stack up. These power adapters span a wide range of power quality. Thanks for watching. Next week, I have a video on alternate uses of USB power. The week after that, I am finally getting the Flexiformer video in. I said I'd do it. Don't worry, I'm going to turn this thing into an awful power adapter if it works. I hope it works. Check out my website for upcoming videos. There's a schematic, schematic schedule of release dates. I have many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Bye for now.